SOPs are, in theory, very powerful tools, but they may be useless without proper implementation in the business. Let's say that you just spend a whole day writing an SOP for a task that your team members always ask you about. You just finished, and then the next day comes, and John from the service team asks you about this task. And you're like, fuck, it's in the SOP database, didn't you see it? Well, of course, he didn't find it. And why is this happening? Well, because the SOPs aren't organized in a way in which your team knows where they are. So they default to asking you. So my purpose with this video is that all the time that you are gonna spend crafting those SOPs are really worthwhile because you're gonna organize them in a way that your team are actually going to find them and use them. By the way, this is video number three in my SOP series. I'm going to drop in the description of this video the links to the other two videos where we cover how to find which SOPs to create and how to actually write them. And for this video, I have a disclaimer. Everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video is gonna apply mostly to small companies of no more than 20 or 30 employees. For bigger companies, we will need something a little bit more complex. But as I typically work with small companies, this is the kind of companies that I'm gonna be focusing on in this video. Okay, so back to it. The objective that we have is that everybody is able to find the SOPs that we create so they don't bother us and the SOPs can actually do their work. So we need that the structure that we have for our SOPs are easy to use and intuitive, like iPhones, like everybody knows how to use an iPhone. And the simplest solution that I found is a two-tiered organization, a broader level and a finer level. We'll see what I mean right now. So let's start with the broader level. We're gonna have three big areas of the company, strategic, operational, and support. This is actually what I'm using for my own company. The strategic ones are like making a treasure map. The SOPs that are gonna be inside of this category are the ones that are gonna help us understand where the business wants to go and what it wants to be when it grows. It is mainly planning the big stuff. Now, what is inside of the operational? The operational SOPs are gonna be like the recipe of your favorite cookie. They're gonna tell you exactly what you need to do to make your product or to tell people about it. It is basically everything that is around the making money endeavors of the business. And finally, support. They are like the instructions that you will find in a Lego set for the small pieces that hold the big parts together. Without them, the whole structure will crumble. They're gonna explain how to do the little things like answering the phone or keeping the website running or explaining how to send an invoice, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's try to understand why this is important and how this is going to help us just this first year. Let's say that someone's looking for an SOP related to how do we fulfill one specific part of the service. Well, he will directly know that he will need to find in the operational SOPs. So it's already going to narrow down the search a little bit more. It's like the first filter. Now let's say that we are wondering when we need to pay a contractor. Well, this smells like support, right? Or what is the vision of the company? This smells like strategic. So you can see how helpful this first tier is at helping narrow the search broadly. Then the second tier is gonna be the one that is gonna help actually the guy or the girl to find the actual SOPs. Okay, so what are we going to have in this second tier filter? This is going to depend greatly on the company. I typically work with agencies and my business is an agency. So I'm gonna show you what's inside each of these three levels for my agency, because I'm sure that it will give you some ideas for your business. But before we get into this, I have noticed that only 15% of you viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. My purpose, is to make all this content available to as many business owners as possible so they all can become free through their businesses. So by you subscribing, this is gonna help me achieve actually that and make a positive impact in the world. So please, before continuing watching this video, subscribe down below and back to the video. Okay, so now I'm gonna show what is inside each of them so you can have an idea. And then I'm going to show you the actual SOPs that my company has inside each of them. So it's even more clear. So I'm gonna start first with what I consider is the priority, what we should construct first, which is the operational, what actually makes money in the company. Honestly, this is the easiest to visualize because it's sequential. Because before we sell anything, we need to define what we are gonna sell. And this is what we find right here. 
product and service design. Once we have defined what we want to sell, we need to promote it so other people understand that it exists. So we have promotion and marketing. Now, when people know that it exists, we need to sell it. And if, like in my case, it's a service business, we need to onboard the people into the service. So this is sales and onboarding. Then we're gonna fulfill the service, so fulfillment, and after the service has been fulfilled, we have the after sales or offboarding. So now I'm gonna show you how it looks in Notion. These are all the operational SOPs that I have inside of the company. And all these little separations or groups are what I show you over here, okay? So exactly this is what we are seeing in Notion. The way that I have built it is by having a type property, which is a select property. This I have strategic, operational, and support. And then a process property, which has each of these areas. And this then allows me to create this view by filtering by operational, and then by grouping by the process, okay? And you can see here the kind of SOPs that I have inside of this operational area. As you can see here, I also have a code. This code only has one purpose. In sequential processes, such as this one, um, things happen in a sequence. And having this code allows me to then sort the SOPs by the order in which they are executed. So it is, it is even easier for people to find, because if you know that you need some information of something that happens at the end of the fulfillment of the service, you may go to fulfillment and then you will look at the end of the list. Okay, so then what is within strategic? So here we have strategic planning. This is everything related to your company's vision and how are you going to get there? I also have resource allocation. This is basically how my company uses the money that it earns. And finally, continuous improvement, which are the actions that we take to continuously improve what the company does. Let me show you in Notion what it looks like. Here, since this is not sequential, I don't have any code, so because I don't care uh, how this is sorted, but in strategic and planning, I have the employee handbook, people structure, my culture values, vision, mission, uh, calculating uh, systemifies capacity, KPIs, how we calculate the salary for a contractor, and all, all, these kind of, uh, all these kind of things. And finally, we have support. Instead of here, we are gonna be able to find all the contract templates that we have, the hiring process, how to pay contractors, when to pay them, everything related to what in big companies we're gonna call the HR department. Next, we have training. So this is anything that will help improve the skills of our team members. So for example, we can use these to show how to use Notion, for example. Then admin, these are all the little tasks that, are, that typically a VA will do, such as creating invoices, managing email, etc. Then customer support, this is a very good place to save all the questions that typically your clients ask you and the answers for them. And finally, buying. If there is any process that your employees should follow when they want to purchase something with the company's money, these, pro these kind of processes should be here. Now, let me show you in my company, what do I have there? I mean, in, in all honesty, this is the part that I have the least developed yet because it's the one that I need the least. But for example, here we have how to upload expenses, upload them on sales, how to write SOPs with AI, how to log content and website analytics and customer support, how to answer client questions by Loom, some, que some answers to some question, in buying like the purchasing process that we have at Systemify, which basically we don't have. <laughs> This page is empty. Employment contract templates, in training, all Notion stuff, how to assign tasks, how to create your personal dashboard. So, okay, I want that you take this organization as an example. This is what works for my company. But still, I believe that this two-tier organization is gonna help a lot to your team and even to yourself to actually find the SOPs that you need at each moment. So to me, what will be the next steps? It will be to implement some sort of organization similar to this one, and then just try it out. If your employees or even yourself keep wondering where an SOP is, maybe that was not the right organization and you can start tweaking it until the questions that you receive from others are fewer and fewer. The purpose is that nobody will ever ask you about something 
that is already explained in an SOP. And that when they ask you, it is because that SOP does not exist. Well, I hope that this organization is gonna make all the time that you have spent crafting those SOPs worthwhile, because people are actually gonna find those SOPs and use them. I'm not gonna leave some videos around here that you may be interested in after this video. And that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.